Saxon Algebra 1 half, lesson 12. We are talking today about prime numbers. I love prime numbers because once you get the hang of them, prime numbers make a lot of our calculations a whole lot easier. So this is a topic and the little tricks and techniques that we're gonna to use to work with prime numbers are going to be useful all the way through your study of mathematics and um, definitely worth the effort we're gonna put into learning them. Remember that a number is prime if the only way that number can be a product of a multiplication problem is one times that number. So a great example is five. The only two numbers that multiply to get five are one times five. Okay, that makes it a prime number, meaning it can't be broken down any farther. That's as far as it will go. The opposite of prime is called composite. Something that's a composite means it's made up of other things. And a great example of a composite number is six because yeah, we can do one times six, that's for sure, but we can also do six equals two times three. So this is the really important fact. It makes it, that makes it a composite number. We can find other factors besides just one in that number to, uh, to multiply together in order to get that number we're talking about. All right, one little wrinkle. is the number one. It's neither prime nor composite. It's just, dare I say it, it's a little freak child. One is just sad. And he's not a prime number, he's not a composite number. Remember that it's a little trick, okay? So a prime number is an, a whole number greater than one whose only whole number factors are one and the number itself. Those are words, ew, you can see by the numbers, a better way to understand this. Okay, I don't think you necessarily have to write this in the back of your book. It's not really a formula. Mm. You can if you want copy these two numbers, but five is a great example of a prime number and six is a great example of a composite. So let's go on with the examples. 12.1, find the prime numbers from one to 40. Here's the thing, it's one of those things that we need to memorize them, but if we just keep working with them for a while, we will get familiar with them and you'll remember. It helps if you know your times tables really well. So if you know your times tables, fabulous. If you still struggle with them a little bit, which by the way, no shame, that's, it's not your fault. It takes a long time for our brains to really memorize something deep down. Um, so all of this is just practice that will help you get those times tables locked in. But if you don't have them already locked in, this is going to help you do that. It might also frustrate you a little bit because you really need those at the tip of your fingers um, in order to work these problems. A side note, if you aren't really strong on your multiplication tables yet, if you think you could use a little beefing up, please find some games uh, to add to either a tablet that you have or your mom's phone that you can get your hands on from time to time. But if you're in a boring situation, there are some semi-fun, I mean, it's math, it's not like it's gonna be a party, but there are some respectable apps that will allow you to practice your multiplication that I've seen um, available and if you just ask your mom to load a couple good ones on her phone, or your own if you've got one, but um, you know, if you're stuck in the car or if you're by yourself late at night with your feet up on the wall and you don't know what to do, that's a great way to practice. Okay, back to what we're talking about. What I'm going to do and I want you to do with me is we're gonna make here 
a list of the numbers 1 through 40. I'm going to try to write 1 through 10 on each line and then do four lines. And then we're going to go through and practice ruling them out. This is something else you can do in your spare time. I know, if you want, um, to help you memorize these. All right, so let me try to space these out. Respectable-ish, right? Okay, then the second row I'm going to just repeat. And the third. I have to squeeze that one in. And then, yes, go ahead and do the fourth. I'll be quiet and wait for you. I'll give you a minute or two to catch up so you don't have to keep pausing, which I imagine would be very annoying. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're gonna go through and start crossing out any numbers that we know are composite numbers. And what's cool is, remember those rules for divisibility that we, we learned just a few lessons ago? We can use those to help us with these. Now we know one is not prime, so I'm gonna cross him off right away. Please join me in that. He's neither pr prime nor composite, he's just a little freak child. Now, we know that any number that ends in an even digit, 2, 4, 6, 8, or 0, is going to be divisible by 2. So that means, by definition, if it's divisible by 2, then it is a composite number. It's not a prime number. So we can go through our list and cross out all the even numbers. You guys, we just got rid of half this list. So join me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down the columns because that just makes it a little more efficient. So I'm going down everyone that ends in 2, everyone that ends in 4, everyone that ends in 6. This is why it kind of pays off to make the chart neat, right? Everyone that ends in 8, and everyone that ends in 10. Okay. That was nice. Um, so I've crossed out all the twos. I'm going to now think of our other rules. Well, dividing by 10 means that it has a zero at the end, but look, we crossed all those off already. So we don't have to worry about the divide by 10. Divide by five means that the, if a number is divisible by 5, that means it ends in either 5 or 0. We've already crossed off all the zeros, but that means we can cross off all these 5s, right? We know that they're not prime because they're divisible by 5. Goodbye. Okay, so we've covered our rules for 2s, 10s, 5s, and our last rule is for 3s. Now, what's nice about this is we don't have to consider each number by itself. We can just go through and every third number will be divisible by three, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, already got that. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, got that. 13, 14, 15, got that. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, okay, goodbye. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, that's nine times three, we don't need that. 30, okay, 33, I'm doing every third number still. And you saw the pattern, the, the multiples of three times an even number, like three times two, we already had cut those out. So we were just cutting out three times an odd number. Okay, we're getting really close, you guys. What about our seven times? Seven is seven times one. Oh, you know what, I shouldn't have crossed out those two. My bad. Five is also prime. It's divisible, but all we get is one. So I was wrong to cross those off. I'm so sorry. Don't you hate it when the teacher's confusing? I do. Okay, so seven 
is prime, but we can go through and do our multiples of seven. Seven times two is 14, crossed off. Seven times three is 21. Seven times four is 28. Seven times five is 35. And then seven times six is bigger than this. So what we have done is a really thorough job and we can go back now and circle whatever's left. Two is prime, three is prime, five, seven, 11, 13, 17, and 19, 23, 29, 31, and 37. Those are the prime numbers between one and 40. There are no multiplication factors that will give us this as an answer, okay? Except one times that number. So that is the list. Um, John writes them out in a list. That's, it's okay with me if you just did it like this. But if you can practice doing this, again, just divide out everything, just cross out everything that's divisible by two, three, five, and seven. Cross off the one, and what you have left is the list, okay? So those four numbers are the, the important ones. And when we cross off all the multiples of these, we get the right answer. Okay, so that's cool. That helps us stay familiar with these. Let me flip over. And let's try, there's only one more problem, but this is what we're going to do more of, a lot more of. The instructions say, write the number 1,260 as a product of prime numbers. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna break this number down into all the little pieces that we have to multiply together to get that as the product. And I have a very specific way of doing this and it's different than what John does. So I want you to do it the way that I do it and not the way John shows in the book. We're gonna make what are called factor trees. If you worked with me last year, you'll remember these. If not, you're just gonna be excited because they're super fun. Here's how we start. We think of any two numbers that will multiply together to give us this. And we make two little branches of the tree. When I see the zero at the end, I know immediately 126 times 10. That's the way I'm gonna choose to break it apart, that first two pair of factors. Um, you could divide this by two, you could divide it by five, looks like you could divide it by three as well. Any of those are fine. Anything that jumps into your head is fine, and my factor tree might not look always exactly like your factor tree. But as long as these, as long as we start with a valid pair of factors, we're gonna get to the same answer, so it's fine. All right, I wanna work on the 10 first because it's a little bit easier. What I do, once I break it down, I say, are, is this number prime? No, 10 is not a prime number. We proved that a minute ago. So let's break that down into two more factors. Um, what equals 10? Well, two times five equals 10. Is either one of these numbers prime? Yes, they're both prime. So I circle them and that means I'm done with that part of the factor tree. Now I have to go back over here to my 126. That's why I wanted to do this one first. It's easier and shorter. Okay, I need to think of two numbers that multiply to 126. Well, I know it's an even number, so I know it's gonna be two times something. And if you can't do it in your head, there is zero shame in setting yourself up a little division problem, right? Two times something equals 126. I know because that six is an even number. And with practice, you'll be able to do these in your head. But for now, let's say that you can't. Two into one, no. Two into 12, yes. Six, six times two is exactly 12. We bring down the six and that goes in there three times. Okay, so what that tells me, I don't even have to finish writing it out. Two times 63 equals 126. All right, so I've broken this number down. Two is prime, so we can circle it, we're done. 
What about 63? Can you think of any two numbers that multiply together to get 63? Well, if you were with me in the room, I'd be making you do all the heavy lifting here. But I'll give you the answer because Gracie doesn't know. She's sleeping. Where'd she go? She's sleeping under the table. So she has got nothing for us. But I can tell you right now that 63 is, I'm sorry, four. It's nine times seven, right? So once again, I ask myself, are, is either of these numbers prime? Yes, seven is, I circle it. Nine is not prime, nine's composite. So I can do three times three. And now we've, we've taken every one of those original two factors and broken them all the way down to prime numbers. So now we're almost done. All we have to do now is rearrange it and make it look cute. Now it's an art project. We've done all the math thinking. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna list all of these factors together in order from least to greatest, two times two times three times three times five times seven. And now we just have to be careful to make sure we didn't forget anything. Uh, I, sometimes it helps to kind of cross them off as you rewrite them down there. Five and seven, okay. This is what we call the prime factors of 1,260 and sometimes John likes to write that as the full answer. If you just gave me this much, I would be happy. If you wanna put it equal to 1,260, then bonus points. Um, you can use dots, or if you like, you can use X's. I'm trying to wean you of those X's because the further we get into algebra, the less, we, the less often we use X's, we tend to use dots or parentheses to show multiplication. But John uses X's in the answer and that's fine. Okay, so this is a factor tree. It's how we break down a composite number into its prime factors. It's so useful, you guys. And you'll see right here, 100, this is, this is your instruction for practice. Write each number as a product of prime numbers, just like we did. And there are three numbers for you to break down. This is the biggest and hardest one. Well, they all do. They all end in zero. So you know that it's something times 10 will give you that number, right? 12 times 10, 64 times 10, 2,520 times 10. And no, I'm sorry, 252 times 10. I can't even talk. Um, which again is a dangerous thing for a problem for a teacher to have. So you'll break these down using factor trees. This is John's method. It works, but I don't want you to use it. I want you to use the tree. All right, lesson 12 is now lovely history and you are ready to move on and do your homework for the end of this week. Congratulations. Good job, you guys. I will see you next time.